Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Amy. And this is our dog, Jagger. We left our beautiful home in Maui and built ourselves a home on wheels. And now we would like to invite you to join us as we drive from California to Panama. Previously on the Traveling Together Journal. We left the city of Oaxaca and spent several days exploring the beautiful remote valley of Santiago Apola before making our way north to the Jardín Botánico Elia Bravo Ollis. All right, we're headed out to explore the botanical garden here in the desert. Jardín Botánico Elia Bravo Olis is located in the Tehuacan Cuicatlan Biosphere Reserve, a 1,890 square mile area boasting more than 80 species of cacti, some of which only grow in this part of the world. The visitor center was bustling when we arrived Sunday, but on Monday afternoon it was deserted. We strolled through the exhibit area where you can see displays of taxidermy animals that live in the area and information about the local people and their traditional way of life. We then set out to enjoy the beauty of this semi-arid desert. This is somebody's old um, adobe like house or something, all made of mud and straw. I thought it was ruins until I checked out the fireplace and there's chicken wire and a sheet of wood that's just old. I don't think they had sheets of wood like that back in the day. <laughs> After another restful night at the Botanical Garden, we decided to head just down the road to San Juan Raya, where we could reportedly hike out and see some real-life dinosaur tracks. Yeah, so that is how they're finding us a guide. She's like calling out through uh, these big horns. Uh, to the entire town to have a guide show up to give us a walk to go see the dinosaur footprints. We got the impression that it was going to take a while for a guide to show up, so we decided to check out the Visitor Center Museum. We figured any information we could decipher from the displays would help us understand what our Spanish-speaking guide was going to try to tell us. Plus, anything having to do with dinosaurs is usually pretty cool. Some cool looking fossils. Some sweet paintings. The whole town has dinosaur paintings in it. It's pretty cool. Eventually, our guide Alexta arrived and we set out into the desert. Alexta grew up in the area and was very knowledgeable about the environment that we were in. So, mezcal and tequila are different? Uh, te tequila. He was also very patient with our poor Spanish and seemed to appreciate Amy's enthusiasm to learn about edible plants despite the language barrier. Alexa. 
Alaska, showing us the way to the dinosaur tracks, and also telling us about how almost every plant in the desert is edible and they're all delicious according to him. So Alexo is just telling us that uh, this used to be the shoreline for the Atlantic Ocean before um, the land was pushed up to a higher altitude. And he was just showing us the oysters and the rocks and uh, explaining the uh, rock formation. And that's why we keep finding shells. It was only about a mile trek through the desert, but we were really taking our time and exploring, seeing the rugged terrain with a new perspective thanks to the information shared by our guide. We were really glad that we had decided to bring a full supply of water for the short hike because we were really sweating it out in the midday sun by the time we arrived at the main attraction. Big ones. Yep. On the way back, Alexa continued to show us more delicious and useful plants. In an environment that I would have thought to be inhospitable, he showed us that there was food and usefulness in almost everything. We had walked right past this set of tracks on our way out, and now on our way back, Alexa's pointing them out, and it's hard to imagine how anybody found these things in the first place. These are from an adult and baby Brontosaurus. These trees are called Pie de Elefante, or Elephant's Foot, and this particular tree is over 800 years old. Alexa shared with us a local fable that offered us the advice that if you are feeling sad, you should hug the pie de elefante and your worries will go away. Do you feel better? I didn't really feel bad to begin with. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's cool to feel. After another restful night in the desert, we hit the road early and headed north. We left Jardín Botánico Elio Bravo Ollis and made our way to the small mountain town of Tlachichuca. This town doesn't get a ton of tourists, but those that do come, come for the same reason as us. Pico de Orizaba, the third highest peak in North America and the first glacier that Matt has ever seen. It's October, we're in central Mexico, and that's snow. <laughs> Next time on the Traveling Together Journal, we attempt to drive up Pico de Orizaba to the Piedra Grande base camp at an elevation of 14,000 feet, from which we hope to reach the base of the glacier, despite a lack of good maps, physical conditioning, proper equipment, or common sense. What could go wrong? Tune in to find out. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. We would like to thank a few people who have chosen to click that buy us a beer button and support the creation of this content. We'd like to give a very special thanks to Lori Casamuro. We've got James Brown and David Fuller. And that's right, you may have heard David Fuller's name from the last time we thanked him for buying us a beer, but that guy bought us more beer. Thanks, David. Cheers, man, what party dude. <laughs> We also need to thank E. Grant, Katherine Jones, and Rock Solid Toys. We did check out Rock Solid Toys' website because, well, it was curious when we got a nice little donation from him. And he does have a website. They do some auto fabrication work. If you want to check that out, you're going to type in the old Google machine there, Rock Solid Toys. Thanks, guys. <laughs>